One of the best aspects of Monster Hunter is the sheer variety of ways to play the game. This is all thanks to the various weapons and sheer amount of builds or sets that you can create. So I'm doubling with an anti elatrion build for the Heavy Bowgun in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Now the main purpose of an anti build is to create a set that is made to counter a specific monster in the game. In this episode we're looking at countering a Latrion, providing hunters with two builds to take on the Blazing Black Dragon. One safe, one risky. The Heavy Bowgun is in a little bit of an unusual place when it comes to taking on a Latrion. It's not a weapon that really benefits from elemental damage, thus sometimes it can struggle to power down the monster. On top of that you have to worry about your ammo supply, as you cannot go back to camp and restock unless you want to cart. So these builds are aimed to give you enough elemental power to power down a Latrion at least once during each phase and then combine it with enough raw damage to finish the hunt. So the first build is the risky anti elatron Heavy Bowgun build. This build, much like all the risky builds out there, makes use of the Safi Jiva armor providing us a ton of DPS but makes it risky because it drains our health with each shot of the weapon. The ammo types we're focusing on with this build are primarily flame ammunition as we're using a fire build and piercing ammo too. So for this build you'll need the Safi Crested Crown Beta, the Chest Beta, Van Braces Beta, Belt Beta and Boots Beta. I'm also using a Razor Sharp Charm and for my weapon I'm using the Kiara Assault Rage. This has a health regen augmentation and an elemental up augmentation attached to it. As for the custom mods, I've gone for increasing the weapon's raw attack as there are no custom upgrades to increase the elemental damage of the weapon. As for the specialist tools, these are down to personal preference. So when it comes to the jewels, you've got a fair few to play around with. First of all, I've gone for blaze jewels to max out the fire attack of this build. Of course, if you were using a different weapon and thus using a different elemental ammo type, you would replace the blaze jewels to match whatever new element you were using. I've then gone for resistor jewels for blight resistance, vitality jewels for health boost, tenderizer jewels for weakness exploit, an evasion jewel for evade window, a mind's eye jewel for the ballistic skill, and then you'll have a jewel to play around with to which I've gone for a hard ice resistance jewel as we are taking a Latrian on in its ice form to start off with. As for the jewels on the mantles, these are down to personal preference to which I've gone for protection jewels whilst wearing the rock steady mantle, and as we are taking a glider mantle and we are using pierce ammunition too, I've gone for pierce jewels to give us the piercing shot skill. So if you've done what I've done here, you should have built with 150 health, 100 stamina, which will be 200 health and 150 stamina. When you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables, you have a raw attack of 422 with 50% base affinity. This is taking into account the true Dragon Vein Awakening skill. And this will also be 100% when you take into account weakness exploit. Unfortunately though, you'll have high deviation. And when it comes to the custom mods, I've gone for a recoil suppressor, reload assist, a shield mod, power barrel and ranged attack up. A lot of these are optional, however the recoil suppressor and reload assists are kind of essential. When it comes to the special ammo as well you have the wyvern snipe, making tenderizing monsters really easy with this build. And then finally when it comes to the defense you have a strong defense that is exceedingly good against every element especially fire and ice but is a little bit weak to dragon. So when it comes to the skills first of all you have fire attack level 6 increasing the fire damage of this build. Of course if you were using a different weapon and thus a different elemental ammo type you would replace fire attack to match whatever new element you were using. You have evade window at level 5. Evade window is a skill that increases our invulnerability frames when we perform dodges. However normally with the heavy bowgun you don't really use dodges that much. I would normally prefer to use a heavily modified heavy bowgun build that makes use of a shield and the guard skill and thus you block the attacks however this build naturally had a vade window built into it and just maxing it out was an easier option than investing heavily in the guard skill anyway you have health boost level 3 allowing our health to get to the maximum of 200 you have ice resistance level 3 which increases our defense slightly as well as our ice resistance you have blight resistance level 3 which nullifies all elemental blights which is exceedingly handy for the elatrion hunt as it means we don't have to bring null berries onto the hunt you have critical boost level 3 critical boost is a skill that increases our damage whenever our attacks crit a monster however it only increases the raw damage portion of an attack it does nothing for the elemental or ailment portion of an attack imagine attacks being divided into certain portions you know part of it is going to be a raw attack taken by your attack value another portion of it will be elemental taken by your elemental rating so on and so forth critical boost only increases the raw attack value Anyway, you have Weakness Exploit level 3. Weakness Exploit is a skill that increases our affinity whenever we're attacking monster weak points. And should these weak points be tenderized through Clutch Claw attacks first, this increase to our affinity is even greater. Weakness Exploit at level 3 can potentially provide us an extra 50% bonus affinity. 
your ballistics level 1, which is definitely a needed skill whenever you're using elemental ammo or piercing ammunition. Basically, it eliminates the worry when it comes to critical distance with the heavy bow gun, meaning that your shots should still be dealing the most amount of damage they can, regardless of your distance to and from the monster. Of course, it doesn't completely eliminate range. I mean, sometimes you can get far enough away from a monster that your shot will still deal no damage, but for the most part, it just eliminates the worry regarding critical distance. Anyway, you have spare shots level one. Spare shots is a useful skill for bow guns. It gives us a chance at not consuming a bullet when we fire the weapon. Thus increasing our DPS as we don't need to potentially reload as much. And also in the case of a Latrion, means that we potentially have more ammunition overall to fight the monster. Anyway, you have critical element level one. Critical element is a little bit like critical boost. Basically when our attacks crit a monster, it increases the elemental damage of that attack. And then finally, when you're wearing your mantles, you have piercing shots, which increases the damage of piercing ammunition, which we will be using with this build. After we have powered down the monster in order to conserve ammunition, and especially when it transfers into its dragon phase or the phase opposite to whatever elemental ammo you are using. So in this case, it would be its ice phase. We're going to be switching over to piercing ammunition to conserve the flame ammunition to when it's in its ice phase. We are doing this because the glider mantle has a quick cooldown and as the piercing shot skill is associated with that mantle thanks to the jaws we're using it means that we should be able to capitalize on this quite a bit and then finally for the skills you'll have divine blessing level two which gives us a small chance at taking reduced damage when we take a hit from a monster Finally, for the set bonus, you only have one of them, which is the Safi Jeeva Seal, True Dragon Vein Awakening, which gives us a ton of passive buffs for simply having the weapon drawn. When our weapon is drawn, it gives us increased base affinity, and it also gives us increased elemental and ailment ratings. But there is a downside to this. For every shot we fire, it will drain our health, leaving a small portion of red health on our health bar, and this can quickly build up. And should we take a hit, whilst we have a large portion of red health on our health bar, it can potentially cart us, as red health is considered health lost when it comes to taking monster attacks. However, should we continuously attack a monster for a certain amount of time, then the true dragon vein awakening will initiate a heal, healing us for the red health it drained. But there we have it, that is the risky anti-Elatrion heavy bowgun build I'd recommend. But every build out there comes with pros and cons. The biggest pros for this build include its strong elemental and raw attack. Regardless of if you're using flame ammunition or piercing shots, you should still be able to power down Elatrion and finish the hunt fairly effectively. On top of that, it has a few defensive skills, thanks to having evade window, health boost and ice resistance. And then finally for the pros is the True Dragon Vein Awakening buff itself, providing us a ton of extra DPS skills for simply having our weapon drawn. But unfortunately there are cons. The biggest con for this build is the True Dragon Vein Awakening health drain, which can potentially leave us at risk and is the reason why this build is called the Risky Build. And the other con is that unfortunately, ammo is going to be an issue with this build. To be honest, with the heavy bow gun, regardless of what build you are using, ammo is always going to be an issue and you have to get used to crafting ammo during a hunt as well. But if you can get past this though, this is a fairly effective build at taking on a Latrion with the heavy bow gun. Which moves us on to the next build, which is the safe anti Elatrion heavy bowgun build. This build eliminates the health drain found on the risky build, so we no longer have to worry about that. But on top of that, it can also use both flaming and ice ammunition, meaning that regardless of what form Elatrion is in, we should be able to take it on and power it down quite effectively. So for this build, you'll need the Rhyme Helm Beta, Grand God's Peer Guard Beta, the Rhyme Guard Van Braces Beta, the Grand God's Peer belt beta and the bracadium grease beta i'm also using an iron sight charm 5 and for my weapon i'm using the soul fire raw blaze this has a health regen augmentation and then an elemental up augmentation as for the specialist tools i would say these are down to personal preference but i would strongly recommend taking the glider mantle which will explain why in a minute so when it comes to the jaws again you've got a fair few to play around with First of all, I've gone for Blaze Jaws to max out the fire attack of this build. This is because we'll be going up against the Latrion starting in its ice phase. Of course, if you were taking on a Latrion in its fire form, you would replace the Blaze Jaws for Frost Jaws to max out the ice attack. However, we have also got Frost Jaws in the Glider Mantle. This is because to conserve ammunition whenever it switches into its dragon form, or if it gets to the point where it reverts back to its fire form, we can put on the Glider Mantle 
and use frost ammunition to help power down the monster and also to not use up all the flaming ammunition we have. Anyway, I've then gone for Vitality Jaws for health boost, Resistor Jaws for blight resistance, Critical Jaws for critical boost, a Shield Jaw for the guard up skill, Tenderizer Jaws for weakness exploit, a Mind's Eye Jaw for ballistics, and then finally the Jaws on the mantles. These are down to personal preference, to which I've gone for protection and sheave Jaws. So if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which will be 200 health and 150 stamina when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You'll have a raw attack of 443 with 20% base affinity. This should be able to get to 100% when you take into account maximum might and weakness exploit. You'll have average deviations. When it comes to the custom mods, I've gone for shield mods, power barrel and reload assist. When it comes to the special ammo, you'll have the wyvern snipe. As for your defense, you have a strong defense of 1039. That is okay against every element except for ice. So when it comes to the skills, again, you'll have fire attack at level six. You have guard at level five. Guard is a useful skill, especially when we're using shield mods on the heavy bowgun, allowing us to block attacks. Guard at level five basically reduces the knockback of monster attacks, as well as the stamina cost for blocking that said attack. To effectively use guard, Against Delatrion, you kind of need guard at level 5 and at least 3 shield mods on your heavy bowgun. Anyway, you have maximum might at level 5. This is a result of the armor we're wearing. Maximum might is a skill that increases our affinity so long as we have full stamina. And maximum might at level 5 also gives us a bonus of having the buff kick in straight away as soon as our stamina is refilled, which normally takes a few seconds to kick in after the stamina is full. Anyway, you have Health Boost level 3, Blight Resistance level 3, Critical Boost level 3, Weakness Exploit level 3, Divine Blessing at level 2, which can be level 3 when we're wearing our mantles. You have Quick Sheave at level 1, which can be potentially a level 2 when we're wearing our mantles, allowing us to sheave our weapon a little bit more quickly. You have Flinch 3 level 1, which is a byproduct of the armor, which helps resist minor monster attacks and knockbacks. You have Ballistics level 1, Guard Up level 1. Guard Up is a skill we got thanks to the Shield Jaw, allowing us to block unblockable attacks bar of course Alatrion's ultimate ability. You'll also have Guts level 1, a byproduct of the weapon we're using. Guts is a skill that works like Feline Moxie. Basically it puts a point on our health bar and so long as our health is above that point, should we take a hit that would kill us, it will leave us alive on one health. And then finally when you're wearing your glider mantle, you have Ice Attack at level 4, increasing the ice damage of this build. As for the set bonuses, you have two of them. First of all is Velkana Divinity, Critical Element, which increases the elemental damage when our attacks crit a monster. And finally, you'll also have Rajang's Will, Maximum Might Secret, allowing the Maximum Might skill to get from level 3 to a maximum of level 5. So there we have it, that is the safe anti elatrion Heavy Bogan build. But even this comes with pros and cons. The biggest pro for this build is again, it's able to power down the monster thanks to having a decent elemental damage output. The main ammo types you'll be using with this build include the fire and ice ammunition types. And in between, you can switch between other ammos like dragon ammo, sticky ammo if you want to knock it out and such. Regardless, you should be able to power down the monster quite easily, at least once during every phase. On top of that, the next pro is its strong defense. Having a maxed out guard, shield mods and guard up, it means that we can pretty much block every attack and follow it up with a shot of our own. And then finally for the pros is this build has both fire and ice ammunition, meaning that regardless of what form Alatron starts off in, you have an ammunition type to counter it. But unfortunately there are cons. The biggest con for this build is unfortunately it is kind of low when it comes to raw attack meaning that hunts may take a little bit longer than some other builds out there. But regardless, it is safer as you have the ammo and normally the ammo supplies to finish the hunt without carting. And the other con is, again, much like the risky heavy bowgun build, is this build has some ammo issues. While it's not as bad as the previous build, it's still something you need to be aware of as you'll be crafting ammo during the hunt and there is a small chance you may run out. But regardless, this is quite a comfortable build to use against the Latrion. It can power it down, it's safe to use, and it's even better if you're using this in a group. But before I go, there are potentially better heavy bowgun builds out there. These builds focus entirely on raw attack, piercing ammunition, and dealing as much damage as possible, then purposely carting in order to restock. However, with the anti elatrion builds, I set myself a little task of each of these builds being able to do the monster without actually carting. Thus, the reason I'm still using elemental heavy bogan builds here. But there we have it. Those are two builds I can recommend for taking on elatrion with the heavy bogan. 
Now of course as you farm the monster more and more you'll get Latrion gear and weaponry which have exceedingly high elemental ratings and defenses which should allow you to take on the hunt a little bit more easily. But until then these builds will work just fine. So until next time, I've been Darkblade, bringing you anti electron builds for the Heavy Bowgun in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.